time for the big three. Three stocks, three charts, three trades. Ben Lichtenstein will take us to the charts here to take us through the trades. Don Kaufman, co-founder of Theo Trade. Good morning to you both. So you're seeing the up arrows here today. The Dow is up 239 points, um, snapping a recent uh, sell-off. Tell me how you're feeling, Don Kaufman, about the market here. Well, first, I prefer not to look at the Dow. So uh, we're looking at the NASDAQ, a little bit of sell-side activity. Look, uh, you know, the uh, the key stock continues and uh, will be NVIDIA for the time being. NVIDIA starts to see some sell side activity today. They pulled down Meta. Microsoft actually flipped around. We saw some attempts at rotation back into financials that may actually get pulled back. So uh, this is an interesting kind of crossroads right now in what is a uh, low volatility week. Yeah, you're right about that because it is a holiday week and maybe uh you know, there's less volume and such. So tell me a little bit about your first trade all about Boeing. So uh, in Boeing, so we're doing a little bit of a corporate reshuffle right now in Boeing. Obviously, we're going to be waiting a couple of months for that to, to actually transpire. Nevertheless, I'm looking very specifically at the $180 level inside of Boeing, which is, I think, a really critical threshold for it. If it starts to uh, crack under 180, it's got some legs to the downside. As such, okay, uh, again, I do obviously believe it's going to retest that 180 level, and I'm going to take a bearish trade. I'm going to put on a put spread, not a huge amount of time in this one, just a nice $5 wide spread for Boeing to ultimately crack under 180. The trade is the April 26th expiration. I'm going to be buying the 180 puts and selling the 175 puts, just a $5 wide put spread done for a $1.35 debit. Uh, on trend, but again, that 180 level critical. Okay, so um, and as you noted, that big reshuffle in the C suite happening. Your thoughts on this chart, Ben Lichtenstein? Yeah, I noticed the 180 uh, area, 180 to 190. I'm kind of looking at, and I also noticed the weakness we've seen here. Right, last time we took a look at uh, Boeing on the show, Nicole. I remember we were trying to determine if we had found a bottom yet. It was right amidst all of the news, that door panel flying off and such. And uh, I'd argued it didn't look like it, right? We were talking about how there could be further weakness to come, and there has been. Take a look here, first and foremost, at the sell-off we've seen since the beginning of the year. You can see it's a pretty well-defined trend lower here. Stock was uh, starting off the year up around 235, and it has been coming off. We spend a fair amount of time kind of balancing throughout uh, January, February, into March before we broke down and then uh, bottoming out around 173. Now, Don's got his eye on 180. I'm kind of more focused, again, kind of on this, just this area around 187, we'll call it, 185-ish. Uh, if you wanted to, I think you could look at this as two separate areas of balance that form, but with that long-term trend of the downside, I sort of clumped it all together as one. This is the area I'm focused on. Again, 187, I think we're somewhat uh, bearish here and in a bit of a bear trend as long as we hold below 208. So let's take a step back here because I want to add a little time on. The stock actually topped out, if you remember, back in December of last year. Uh, we were up around 267. And again, another situation where we're just kind of adding some time on here and just adding a couple areas of consolidation on here. 265, 246, 230, 218. Again, the areas that we just identified, 208 and 107, the significance associated with. But hey, easily identifiable trend to the downside. We expect continuation more likely than change. And uh, that's why they say the trend's your friend, right? Uh, those that have been shorting this have been able to let the market kind of do the work for them. Those that have been long this ultimately have, well, on a short-term basis, have had to uh, kind of move very quickly and position themselves properly on a long-term basis. You've been struggling. But take a look here. This is a pretty good reflection of what we're seeing here. Uh, a market that's coming under pressure off recent highs. Again, the highs from the end of last year up around 267. But also a market that's held key lows here around 175 here. So take those out right now. And, yeah, you'd be opening up doors some further energy to the downside here. Stock that has been continues to be under pressure here, Nicole, below the 50-day and below the 200-day moving average. Yeah, so trend is your friend. I mean, there's so many folks who are pulling for Boeing, a great American company, national security, et cetera, et cetera. But you do see the downside potential. Final thoughts there, and then we'll get to your next one, Don. Yeah, look, the corporate reshuffle, it's going to happen in here, but uh, the company's problems are still literally ahead of it and uh, as such still bearish here in the near term. All right. Then up next is the VIX, the fear index. What are you watching there? 
All right. So in the VIX, what I'm actually watching right now is uh, volatility, what looks like it's being suppressed. We're still seeing a tremendous number of premium sellers rushing into the marketplace on a day-to-day -day basis. Everything from what we term zero DTE, okay, out a little bit further. And it uh, looks like, again, volatility is being suppressed right now, ultimately by option premium sellers. As such, again, volatility right now in the overall marketplace is relatively low, but there's some, again, rumblings of some tech issues right now, and those may actually bleed through to some higher volatility in the marketplace. I think it's an appropriate time to take a bullish position inside of VIX. So that would mean if volatility does emerge, if volatility goes up, this trade would actually profit. Now, you can use this trade as a standalone, or you can use this trade as a hedge. This is a May 22nd trade. Uh, we are buying the 14 calls, selling the 19 calls. So it's just a $5 wide, again, a $5 wide call spread done for about a $1.10 debit, looking for some volatility to emerge in the next couple of weeks, maybe two months. And that is exactly the time frame, of course, of this particular position. Okay. And, you know, and it's true, it's sort of been sitting there. I mean, there were times, there was a great trade and you'd buy it down at 12 or 13 and then you would sell it up at seven or 18. I mean, people were doing it. That was the, the best trade ever. It seemed like the easiest trade that people were doing for a while. That being said, it was a couple of years ago. So Ben, tell us about the chart. Yeah, yeah, I think buying some insurance with the market at all time high is never a, a, a bad decision in many ways, right? It helps you sleep a little bit more easily at night and Ultimately, if you do see that pullback, you get uh, uh, to have uh, your eggs in not necessarily all in one basket. Now, the VIX for me, a bit of a, a difficult beast to tame. Um, the one thing that has me a little bit concerned about looking for some upside movement in uh, the VIX is that oftentimes it's very short lived, right? So let's take a look at the chart here. You can see a couple spike highs. I've got a few weeks worth of price activity here, and you can see that we were up around 1794, if you remember. That was all the way in the uh, middle of February. You can also see how we've seen a series of lower highs and lower lows come into play. The VIX here right now as we speak, hanging out right around this 13 level. Pretty good reflection of what we've seen in terms of the broader market. Take a step back and a snapshot, a mental image of this picture. Again, lower highs coming into play. Pretty well-defined trend to the downside as we've come off that near 18 test and again back to this 12, 13 level. Uh, here you can see another situation where it kind of Kind of feeds into what I was talking about going back to October of last year. If you remember, VIX was up around 2023 when the indices were on those lows that we've rallied off of convincingly. And well, there you can see a reflection of basically the mirror image of the move up we've seen in stocks. Now, the VIX kind of sideways more so recently than not, which has me a little bit surprised, right? We've kind of hit the brakes in terms of that downward momentum, yet stocks have continued to rally. Now, one thing I will argue is we have seen gold, which I think has benefited from that more risk uh, uh, or that insurance type uh, buying potential for a risk off type environment coming into play here. The gold's definitely enjoying some gains. I think there's a couple reasons behind that move up we've seen in the gold futures. But here's another example here, just adding some time on back to 2020. If you remember the pandemic, look up around 85. And just want to point to, I, I like Don's idea, right? Because we are at some point going to see a rejection of these upper levels or correction. I also like the idea of having some time on this one so that you don't necessarily have to uh, time it perfectly. Um, we will see a spike in the VIX. The question is when giving it till May ultimately, I think opens up the door for that potentially to happen here. Okay, that was a good summation of the VIX today. Um, final thoughts on this one here as you see this uh, upside potential, Don. Yeah, as Ben was saying, the VIX is, uh, tends to be a bit of a fickle beast. You know, low volatility doesn't necessarily constitute that it's going to be high volatility, but I'll give you one other aspect over here that really comes to mind. Option volumes lately have been just horrendously low. Mm. Like the daily option volume has been horrendously low. And it's something I actually look at. You know, the S&P volume has also been incredibly low. Uh, it indicates there's not necessarily a lot of hedging activity. But those call buyers that have rushed into tech stocks, they have dissipated. And it's one of the other reasons I'm looking at, hey, this could be the forefront of some vol in the, uh, in the next few weeks. All right. Next up, Disney. By the way, the uh, the board meeting will have we'll, about who's going to be on the board that votes next week. I think it's on the third. We'll watch for that. How are you feeling about Disney at 120 today? 
Yeah, not loving Disney. I am not loving Disney over here. I am definitely a bear inside of Disney. And it comes on a number of fronts. Look, we can talk about, you know, the politicizing of Disney all you want. Probably needs a little bit of a corporate reshuffle in there as well. Nevertheless, I'm actually looking at the Disney in terms of the 120 level. Let's push aside all of the other fear, all the other risks in here. Let's push aside even the board. The 120 level creates, I think, huge overhead kind of resistance inside of Disney. It is on a rip to the upside, but it has to crack through that 120. I think it's actually going to pull back and fail off of it. Uh, I'm going to give myself some ample time, though, on this one. I'm going to go all the way out to the June 21st, and I'm going to be buying a put spread. Again, June 21st, going to be buying a put spread. I'm going to be buying the 115 puts. I'm going to be selling the 110 puts. This trade is done for a $1.40 debit, looking for uh, an end and a reversal to Disney off of that very specific 120 level. Okay. Um, so I, I don't know if I've ever seen a bear at Disney. Just kidding. Um, ben? Yeah, kind of un-American, isn't it, Nicole? Uh, let's take a look at the chart here. It's definitely against the trend, that's for sure. Uh, well defined to the upside across multiple time frames. Let's dive into it here. Uh, take a look here at where we were just a couple days ago, or yesterday, I guess I should say. The stock was trading down around 118, rallied all the way up to 122 here today. And as we look here, Don was talking about some of those tech names coming under pressure. Uh, Disney still holding on to positive territory. So I sort of feel like that broader market sell-off that everybody's waiting for and expecting to see at some point, when names like this are in positive territory, it's not necessarily signaling that we're there yet, right? Uh, this is more just, I think, jitters, intraday volatility we're seeing as the market kind of sift, siphons its way through these and, and near these all-time highs. Getting back into this chart here, though, you can see on this, again, one-minute candle chart how it looks like every dollar the market's kind of paused, shares of DIS have regained composure. We're kind of testing a lower extreme range. We've been in, Don mentioned 120. I've got my eye on that area, that's for sure, Don. 119, 120, 121. It was uh, drawn to, to say the least here. Let's take a look here, add a little more time on. That's a one-minute candle chart, so we don't want to put too much into that. We've now got an hourly candle chart here going all the way back to the lows that we saw around 106. If you remember, that was when we were down at the end of February, three areas of consolidation to the upside. Again, kind of teetering around this 120 area. I'll give it to Don. He's got his eye on that uh, a key area to watch here right now. Could be starting to establish a new area of balance at this upper level here. That would be supportive of this trend to the upside. I want to, speaking of trend to the upside, uh, one more chart here I've got for you to show you. This is a longer term, so we're going all the way back now to October of last year. The lows that we bottomed out last fall around 78. Look at this. I mean, uh, talk about it. It's easily identifiable here. And uh, you can also notice how we're in a vertical phase. We're breaking out of balance right now up to 122. Another example of well-defined trend up. Migration of value higher from 82 to current levels. And then again, we are seeking value higher right now. Bulls are hoping for something a little bit more overlapping and rotational around this 120 level. So you could get something that the Bulls would be happy with and Don the Bear could be satisfied with here as well as we see that, Nicole. But it looks to me like, again, longer term trend remains higher here. Yeah. All right. Thank you for all of that. Great charts there, Ben Lichtenstein and Don Kaufman. Final word. Yeah, look for uh, some follow through right now inside of some of the uh, the mega market caps, specifically NVIDIA. NVIDIA, as it sees some sell side activity, again, is actually causing what we call statistical arbitrage to actually pull tech in, which is actually pulling down uh, S&Ps to some degree. The only question right now is, is there going to be follow through? Obviously. This Friday morning when markets are closed, PCE is coming out. I'll tell you what, next week yeah. could actually be a really interesting, volatile week for the marketplace. All right, we'll be ready. And everybody will be back from their spring breaks and such. Don Kaufman, Theo Trade, Ben Lichtenstein on those charts. Thank you both for the big three.